All right, I'm about to tie for you. Um, I fly. I call Mr. Jones uh, from an old Counting Crows song, and uh, this is an adult crane fly, a skating adult crane fly pattern that uh, uh, sort of, you know, obviously loosely based off my my screaming banshee pattern. Um, but this is the single best skating fly I've ever fished, and God, so fun to fish. Um, you know, crane fly, adult crane flies sort of skitter and hop across the water, and this fly does. Um, exactly that, uh, like nothing else you've ever seen. Uh, just super fun to fish with. Um, and we've got a pretty accurate representation here. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll start to whip one up here. So what I've got in my vise right now is a, a sewing needle. And I'm going to take some, this is dot Vivas, uh, sort of wood duck color, cinnamon color. Um, E12 is the number. And I'm going to start my thread here pretty close to the end. And I'm going to wrap up this needle to sort of open even spirals to whatever length I want my body to be. Let's just match them up to, to this one I tied, so I'll just use that to measure. I'm going to go just a bit more here. So darn near the full length of the needle. Pull that a little bit. We'll tie a a full-size grande and I'll bring that thread back to the front again and then for the body here I'm going to take a, a piece of cinnamon colored fly foam or thin fly foam I should say uh, and I've got this cut it's a three millimeter thick piece and I've sliced off a piece that's about two millimeters wide and I'm going to tie this down about a third of the way up no, I'm not. That was a trick to see if you were paying attention. Once I've got that thread base on there, I'm going to tie this piece of uh, yarn to the hook shank. Um, and again, this helps us to get this off the needle. Um, you know, if you tie it directly to the needle, it's really hard to get off. So I'm going to take about a half a strand of brown McFly foam here. Um, and, and again, any kind of yarn will work here. I'm going to tie it down the full length of the, of the thread base. And I'll knock the ends off close. But I did want to leave that tag end back there on purpose. I'm going to leave that hanging out. We're going to use that later. All right, now I can come in with my piece of foam. And again, about a third of the way up, I'll bind that in place right to the end of the, of the underbody. Bind that down good and tight. And then I'm going to come in with a piece of uh, 01X 12 thousandths mono. And I'll just have a piece a couple inches long. And I'm going to tie this in with about, you know, at least an inch or so, stick it out the front. And I'll wrap back over it to about halfway up the body. And then come forward a bit and fold it forward and catch it again so that I've got it tied down in a loop. And then I can cut the short end off. And then just proceed to anchor everything down and run my thread right up right up to the end there. So now I'm going to come in with some, some super glue. And I want to get all the way around this underbody. With as thin a coat as I can manage, you know, which is never quite as thin as I like so I usually get a little more on there than I really want and then I'll just take a, a scrap of foam and kind of wipe off the extra alright so now we're going to start to build the body and the trick to building this body is I'm going to wrap this foam under tension um, with pretty closely overlapping turns and you can see I can kind of control the shape of the body by the spread of those turns I can kind of start to spread them out a little bit more here as I get to the front I've got little extra glue there, it's just good to keep that that scrap handy. To taper it down a bit toward the front here. Last turn. And I'll come up and tie that off. And again, I'm going to wipe that extra glue out just so it doesn't get on my scissor blades here when I go to trim this off. Trim that off as close as I can. Just sort of smooth that out a bit. And then I'll just do a hand whip finish here, right over that, that tie off and that glue. 
And then again, always make sure you wipe your wipe your blades off. And you can see that body is sort of a reverse taper. It's fatter at the back end than it is at the front end. Um, and again, without delay, I'm going to grab that body and kind of start to give it a twist and sort of unscrew it off of the, the needle. And I glued too much of that down, so we've got to cut that out. So once we've got that off the needle, I can pull that end thread out, trim that off, and we've got this nice little extended body. And that's all glued together from the inside. So that thread on the inside was just to kind of hold those pieces there until we got them glued down. All right, now I'm going to get rid of my needle. And I'm going to come in with a Tiemco 2487 in a size 12. Since we're tying a big one. And the 87 is important. You want to hook with the down eye here. Um, let's get us a little more centered here. So that Tiemco 2487 has got the down eye, and the down eye is important um, for helping to get the, the fly threaded um, because that wing is going to extend out over the top and also with, with getting the fly to skate the way we want it. So now I'm going to come in with some Vivas, or I'm sorry, some Semperfly 18 knot nano silk um, in brick beige. This is 30 denier GSP thread. And I'm going to start this just up behind the hook eye. I'm going to make a thread base back to around the point of the hook and then back up to the hook eye and then honestly right behind the hook eye I sort of build a little little thread head there just to make sure that hook eye is all closed up and create a little little uh, bump there so that when I tie the wing in um, or the forward facing wing I've got something to sort of prop that up a bit. Now for the wings on this one this is bleached moose body hair. Um, it's sort of a, a golden tan color. It's beautiful stuff. And I'm going to take a pretty good sized clump of this. Um, you know, on a big fly like this, I want a, I want a nice healthy clump. Um, so I've cut off a, a big chunk. And I'm going to clean this out, just like you do, you know, any deer or elk. And clean all the underfur out. <coughs> clean that out. And I'll put it tips down in my hair stacker. One of the nice things with moose is it's a really nice straight hair. It's pretty easy to stack, so it's not going to take a lot of pounding to, to get it straightened out. Hit that one more time. So I've got a nice thick bundle, all nicely stacked. And I want this, let's see if I hear body here, about the same length as the body. And what I'll do here is I'm going to lay this in with the tips facing out over the hook. I'm going to put two turns around it, and then I'm going to flare that hair toward me. Um, and this is where this, this uh, Semperfly Nano Silk is important. This thread's super strong, very small, um, and I can flare that hard moose hair with it, um, really with no, no risk of breaking the thread. Um, I'm going to anchor that down with a nice wide band of thread, like so. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim these butt ends off at an angle just so I don't have a big lump there. And then I can work my thread tightly down through those butt ends to anchor that further down. And I'll go over that a couple of times. One of the really nice things about this, this 18 knot Semperfly is it's so small, um, I can make a ton of thread wraps where I need to uh, to get things smoothed off without creating a ton of bulk. You just couldn't do that with, with most conventional thread. So that's why we're using that here. So now I'm going to bring my thread back to just about, you know, just behind the point, maybe even with where the barb would be on this hook. And I'm going to take my extended body portion, and I'm going to lay the mono in on top of the hook, and try to get it centered right on top. There we go. And bind that down in place. And we do want a gap between the, the hook and the body here. And then I'll fold that mono back and catch it again, just to anchor that so that it doesn't come out later. And I can trim that extra mono off. So there's our extended body. Now I'm going to come in with a strand of Bard Sexy Floss uh, in size small. And this is this is going to be amber. And we'll use that one right there. 
and I'm going to lay this in just in front of where I tied that mono down. And I'll take half of it back along the far side of the hook and let it dangle. And then catch it again here on the, on the near side with the other half. So those are just dangling out the back. You know, one of the things I see on crane fly patterns is everybody feels like they need to imitate those legs with the knots and, and knees and elbows and ankles and all those other pieces. Um, I found uh, they're probably not important at all, honestly, but the action of the fly is what does it. But um, in this case, we're just going to leave those, those, put these little legs in here. It just adds a nice little effect to it, but it's, you know, it's probably not the most important thing. Um, no, it's certainly not the most important thing. So now I'm going to take another strip of foam that I've cut. Let's see here. It's about three millimeters wide. That's the, the thickness of the foam. And then I cut it about one millimeter thick, you know, one, one and a half. And I'm going to lay this in and get the end cut a little more square here. Lay this in just behind the butt ends of that forward wing. And I'm going to wrap over it right up to the, to the base of those legs. And I'll just anchor that in place. I'm going to come in and dub the thorax, and we want, you know, again, when I come up with a, a fly, when I'm trying to match a bug, I always like to have the real thing. And I'm looking at a real crane fly, he's got a pretty, pretty bulbous thorax. So I'm going to take some cinnamon, uh, cinnamon caddis, I think is what this is called. Yeah, cinnamon caddis, super fine dubbing. I'm going to dub that down nice and tight on my thread. I'm going to build a ball here over, over that foam tie down. Like so. I'm going to add just a touch more there just to fill out that front edge. If you're anything like me, when you watch somebody tie, you hate to watch them apply dubbing 25 different times. So I apologize for that. Not my style. Um, there we go. So you can see we've still got this little space, uh, this, this thread band between the base of the wing and the front of the, of the dub thorax. So this is where we're going to put our wing in. And we're going to take some more of that moose hair, um, about an equal size clump really, maybe slightly smaller. And again, clean that out as best you can. Get all that under fur and short hair out. Put that tips down in my stacker and we'll stack him up as well. Still got some underfur in there. I'm just going at it a little better. Hit him again. I like these, these wings to be perfectly even. It just makes a nice aesthetic on the fly. Probably doesn't make a difference to the fish, but fishy stupid things like worms and salmon eggs and marshmallows so uh, don't pay attention to that. So now I'm going to take this clump I'm going to measure it from my tie down to just short of the tail. Um, so if I get this on your side you can, I'm sorry, just short of the, the end of the body I should say. Um, I'm using my thumbnail on my near side to sort of measure this but you can see the length that I'm shooting for here. I'm going to bump myself just a couple extra millimeters there because we're going to use the butt, is, butt ends of this wing to help stand up the, the front wing. So I'm going to bring my thread right up against the base of the wing and I'm going to lay this hair on top with the butt ends extending out, uh, you know, I don't know, quarter inch, eighth of an inch over those tips. I'm going to put two turns around it and flare that hair in place right up on top. So it's like you do an, an X caddis. Um, and you can see this moose hair is very hard, but what we're using is these stiff butt ends to sort of add some rigidity to this front edge for our skate. So once I've got that anchored in place, and that hair is nice and flared, and you can see I did that with just, I think, three turns right there. Um, that's owed to that super strong thread that makes this job much easier, especially with this hard moose hair. I'm going to divide these wings into two equal clumps, and I just sort of part them with my fingers. You can see I'm just sort of tugging on them like so. And I'm going to pull my foam up in between those two wings 
with my thread still hanging in those butt ends, I'm going to bring it right straight up over the top and pull straight down on the thread. Get a couple three turns. Um, don't go crazy here with your thread tension. That thin thread will cut your foam if you go too hard at it right off the bat. And then I'll come in and trim that piece of foam off. So you can see that's our divider on top now. And you can see how those butt ends are now pressed up against that forward facing wing. So now I'll come in from the front. Usually put my thumbnail under here and kind of spread this out a bit. And I'll bring my thread up behind the hook eye. You can see I'm kind of working from the bottom here with a very short length of thread to wedge that, that thread, those thread wraps, right up against the front edge of that wing, like so. Then I'll come in and whip finish right up behind the eye. Trim my thread out. Spread his wings out a little bit again. So we've got that sort of big profile for the skate. All right, so I'm going to leave these legs a little longer than the body. Just trim them off so that they're even. And then we get to have a little bit of fun with the markers. And again, I don't know that this is super important, but uh, one thing I notice on crane flies is they've got a really beautifully modeled sort of, uh, look like they're carved from wood uh, body. So I'm going to use a couple different colors of of Copic markers and uh, just sort of draw some random lines down the body. This marker here is pale sepia. Um, you know, if you kind of think of wood grain is what you're after, don't go, don't go crazy with any one marker because we're going to use a couple different colors. Uh, this one is Tuscan orange. Give them a little, a couple little highlights here with this. And you can see I'm just letting the tip of the marker sort of find its own way. And then we'll take a copper colored marker and we'll put the, the darkest colors on. And just again, pretty random crosshatch. You know, everybody looks looks at these like I like I spent hours and hours coloring them, but it's really just a pretty random application and I am going across that foam on top as well and then for the last little bit you can you can make some some spots uh, down the side of the body with a black marker uh, they very often have spots I'm sure that makes all the difference it's probably why I catch so many fish is these dots um, so if you want to catch fish you should probably put some dots on yours too I don't know man I'm just trying to give direction so we'll put a few little spots on there. And there's the finished Mr. Jones. Now, uh, I know we've, uh, we've got a pretty big fly now, so I'm going to back us up a little bit and get us refocused here. We'll give you an idea of what it is we're looking at. So you can see that big, wide profile on the bottom with that forward-facing wing for the skate. Um, Pretty realistic body. One of the cool things with this body that I found um, is if we had a, you know, a fly, and this is a problem with most uh, uh, most patterns you see for a crane fly, is they're tied on a long hook with a long body, so they're stiff. Um, and it's, you know, while a real bug will collapse when when a fish eats it, uh, you know, they kind of fold up. Um, a fake fly with a with a big metal hook down the middle of it is is rigid. Um, one of the advantages of this fly is that body will fold up. So um, while you still got the big outside profile, um, that's pretty collapsible. So when they come to eat the fly, they can get it. Um, I fished this on the uh, my Clark's Fork last year with my friend Blake Clark. Um, I don't know if they named it after him or not. I suspect not, although he'd probably tell you otherwise. Uh, but man, we had a fun time fishing this fly. Uh, fish just crushing it. Um, skating the fly, you know, through all the tail outs and, and pools and rocks and uh, fish just coming out of the woodwork to, to eat it. And, and man, when they get it, they, uh, uh, they've got it down their pipe. So uh, barbless hook is, is important. Make sure you pinch that barb. Um, but man, this is, this is one of the most fun flies that I've come up with in a long time. Um, you know, great summertime fly early in the morning. You'll see crane fly activity, adult crane fly activity, them kind of skittering around. Um, but anytime it's sort of dead, um, you know, this is this has been a fly that I can kind of pull them up with, even in, in dead, hot summer conditions. Um, this is a, a bug they're used to seeing that they don't see very often that's not real. So, um, you know, pretty good confidence in it. And 
you know, if nothing else, it is it is hard to hook fish on a skating fly, but um, man, this this fly pulls fish up, and even if you're not hooking them, it's awfully fun to see them come come and bum rush it. So uh, that's our uh, our Mr. Jones. Uh, he just wanted to be a little bit more funky, if you remember the song, and, and that one's pretty funky. So uh, go out and put him to work. Tie a few up. Uh, nice little thing to have in your box if you uh, encounter fish eating crane flies, and even if you don't, just make them eat it. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. So uh, I'm excited about this one. Hope you are, too. Twist some up. Let me know how you do. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.